On this week's KSP News Show. Squad reveal new upgradable space centers and editor gizmos to make your life easier when building. And I explain why KSP News has been slightly lacking in quality as of late. All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jin Lee Kerman! Good morning, evening and afternoon my fellow Kerbanauts, my name is Jin Lee Kerman and welcome to this week's KSP News Show. We have a couple of very interesting stories to bring to you today, including upgradable space centers. First though, let's cover something very, very quick, and that is the new Gizmos system being added into Kerbal Space Program. Max Maps gave us this photo and a bit of an outside look as to what these Gizmos are actually going to be doing. Um, from the screenshot I've got in front of me, it looks to me like you're going to be able to move your craft in lots of different ways. Like, it's going to be a lot easier now to pick up your craft and move it from side to side, because it's got one of the, um, direc the directional... I'm not sure what they're called, they use them in Unity to in order to place your character, the character controller and different objects down. You can adjust the X, the Y and the Z axis of them. And um, I think it's a very good idea because at the moment when you pick up a cockpit and you move to the side, the whole VAB construction thing is just so buggy. Like, part clipping has to be used quite a lot in order to attach engines side by side, and sometimes they'll flame out, like if they're jet engines, they'll flame out asymmetrically if you haven't put them on right, and it's all just very buggy, and I'm glad that the squad are adding this in. So yeah, that's just a very quick little thing to outline what's happening with the new build system. There's obviously going to be a lot more coming into that, but let's move on to the main bulk of today's show about destructible space centres. Yes, that is right, Harvester puts in this week's dev notes. This week I have moved on from the editor gif gizmos, which are almost now complete and pending for Q&A, to complete another major goal for this update, upgradable facilities. The content team has been hard at work for months, already process producing assets for the all the facilities at their various levels. My part in, in this is to make sure the assets are set up properly and spawn at the KSC, and to write code that will Get, make it all work in the game. I've set a new set of controllers and blah blah blah, a load of coding nonsense that you don't need to worry about. He goes on to say, one interesting thing we have we had to find a way to work though was the bits in the space center which aren't part of the facility. These are the filler ground the filler sections between the buildings and the crawl away leading to the launch pad. These objects aren't upgradable by themselves, but they have they have to change as the KSC evolves around them. Now, as he also states further on, and up there, up at the top of the paragraph, he does actually say that the space center will change look and looks depending on how you upgrade it and how far through the game you are. Now, this is amazing, and I can't I honestly cannot wait to start off. I can sort of imagine that the starting space center you get will look somewhat similar to like the original space center, the original mission control building from the old Kerbal Space Program, like 0.17, 0.22, all that sort of stuff. The original old looking ones, the sort of sci-fi looking um, vehicle assembly building and space plane hangar, I think they will start off looking like that and then eventually maybe when you get to sort of maybe mid-range through the career mode path, like the unlocks, you'll be able to um, get the space center that we have at the moment. And maybe when you get towards the more end game sort of stuff, you'll be able to get like an amazing space center with trees and people and car parks and a massive administration building and... Well, I don't know, we'll just have to find out, but I personally think this is an absolutely amazing change that they're making. A nice little update adds to the immersion, it adds another um, a level of completion really, because there's no real way of completing Kerbal Space Program. In a way that's one of the beauties of it, but in career mode you really do need an, an end game if you're working towards a goal. Like I know a lot of series, such as Interstellar Quest by Scott Manley, they do have an end goal, like of a warp drive, but the user sets themselves that goal, and though that is nice from time to time, it is nice to kind of have a goal set for you um, at the end, which it, which is cool, and I think this will um, bring KSP a step closer to doing this. But anyway, 
Moving on to the final story for today. So our final story for today isn't really KSP related, but more related to the KSP News Show. In case you haven't been aware, um, quality has sort of dropped off in the past couple of weeks in terms of content and stuff like that. And there is a very particular reason for that, and I will let real life me, aka Bradders, explain to you guys. So yes guys, this is the reason why KSP News has perhaps been a bit less in terms of quality the past couple of weeks, it is because my room has been being redecorated. And while I've been doing that, I have also been tweaking my setup somewhat. If you guys remember, I had a very small, very rickety um, wooden chipboard desk uh, thing that had a number of problems with it previously to getting this new one. Firstly, ergonomics. The mouse, which I have here, the mouse used to be up top with a keyboard in a drawer underneath. Now, that meant that I had no view of the keyboard and it meant I was looking up at the monitor all the time. This fixes that issue and I've also got a lot more desk space as well. With regards to equipment, everything is still exactly the same as the last actual setup video I made. Um, I've resorted back to using this microphone now because, well, the last one I have, it's in this cupboard here. Um, it's up here, hidden behind all of this, and it, it was good, it was okay, um, but it popped so much, and I thought it was going to be so much better, which meant it's a massive disappointment. Earbuds are new as well, I believe. Samsung earbuds, they came with a phone. I have got some spare ones, though, I use mainly for listening to music and stuff, with my tablets here, which are actually better quality ones. I'm not quite sure what brand they are. They're, uh, there you go, you can see them there if you want to. But this is basically the new setup guys and it's this is where I'm going to be making KSP news. It's also slightly better audio in here now for you guys. Um, so yeah, this is basically the story that I want to bring you today. Not necessarily KSP related, but it could enhance gameplay now that I can actually see where I'm pressing my keys and all that sort of stuff. And yes, before you guys actually start saying, I am left-handed, which means my mouse is on this side rather than like over here. Um, which is kind of a pain, because I do have to use um, WASMD for KSP still. I know I could bind them to over here somewhere, but I, I don't like doing that. I find it easier just to have them here, and it's all good. So yeah, that's pretty good. I'm considering moving my webcam as well up to the top, but we'll see what we we'll see what we can do with live streams and stuff like that. But that's going to pretty much write it up for this week's episode, guys. Yeah, I hope you did enjoy. Remember to like and subscribe for more. This is Jin Lee Kerman, a.k.a. Bradders, signing off. Stay classy.